Robotic manipulation has established itself as a method of automating production and operations across many industries. The result is improved safety for humans, increased speed, and lower costs and resources. While most industrial robots operate in a controlled environment, new robotic systems are extending manipulation to more challenging environments in the real world. The manipulation performance of a mobile robot is generally constrained by its workspace, speed, precision, and accuracy. Aerial robots have been embraced as a robotic tool for their unbounded workspace. When applied to manipulation problems, however, their performance is still lacking. Research groups and startups are now pushing this technology forward, creating fully actuated robots for operations that require physical contact. In our research at ETH Zurich's Autonomous Systems Lab, we aim to push this limit even further, to versatile, fast, and precise aerial manipulation. In this way, we hope to bring the impressive capabilities of robotic manipulators to any environment. Interaction with the physical world requires the ability to produce forces on the environment in any direction. To meet this requirement at the contact point, our flying robot must also be able to produce any direction of force or torque. A morphological exploration that measures versatility in terms of efficiency, omnidirectional flight, and force and torque capabilities led us to the development of an omnidirectional tilt rotor hexacopter. Notably more complex than the standard underactuated quad rotor, this system endures increased model error due to several factors, including tilt rotor dynamics, interacting airflow streams, joint backlash, and highly nonlinear relations in parameters to identify. As we use model-based flight control, we aim to reduce model error and improve flight performance. We approach the problem using a hybrid model, which includes the dynamic model of the simplified system, and adds a learned model for the residual dynamics using Gaussian processes. We define a test trajectory that excites angular accelerations of the system, performing an in-place figure eight trajectory that includes yawing, rolling, and pitching, where the degree of roll and pitch is parameterized. As training for the Gaussian process, we collect data on what we refer to as non-informative and informative trajectories. The non-informed model is trained on data from real flight repetitions of the test trajectory. The informed model is trained on informative trajectories, which are generated with a sampling-based strategy and evaluated in simulation. The informative cost metric is defined as the uncertainty reduction of the updated learned model around the task trajectory in simulation. Real flights of the informative trajectories are then used to gather training data for the informed residual dynamics model. We then compare dynamic error using informed and uninformed residual dynamics models against the case with no model learning on several real flights of the reference trajectory. Focusing on predicted versus measured angular acceleration, we see significant performance improvement with the learned residual dynamics. The informed model further shows significantly better angular acceleration tracking along the body yaw axis compared to the uninformed trajectory model. The intuition behind this result is that the informative trajectory excites the yaw axis to a greater extent. Extending this system to aerial manipulation in its simplest form involves attaching a rigidly mounted arm to transfer forces and torques at the flying base to the point of application. While this approach can achieve full six degree of freedom interaction, limitations such as slower dynamics of a heavy flying base reduce the end effector precision and accuracy. Small orientation errors at the base propagate to large positional errors at the end effector. And although the end effector workspace is practically unbounded, its speed is directly limited to that of the platform base. These factors motivate the need to use compensating mechanics with faster dynamics. We add a fast and light three degree of freedom translational parallel manipulator to compensate for error at the base and to further enable fast and precise interaction at the end effector point. Parallel manipulators offer several advantages over their open chain counterparts. Errors at the control joints are averaged instead of accumulating, the effort from the payload is distributed over the actuators instead of chaining, and the actuators can be placed at the base for minimal inertial effects of the manipulator itself. Assuming that we can compensate for rotational error with a compliant gripper, we employ a three degree of freedom translational delta manipulator for improved end effector positioning. Geometric parameters are selected by optimizing for a chosen workspace and retraction point using a genetic algorithm. The resulting system was then designed and built using aluminum and carbon fiber parts for high rigidity and servo motors to control the joints. Validation of the kinematics in a Vicon motion capture system 
demonstrates good positional accuracy with root mean squared error within 4 mm at the end effector over the entire manipulator workspace. Validation of the dynamic model is performed by mounting the manipulator to a 6-axis force sensor. A dynamic trajectory is commanded. Predicted results from the dynamics model and measured joint coordinates are compared with values measured by the force sensor. Estimated forces from the dynamic model can be supplied as a disturbance estimate to the controller. Preliminary tests of independent trajectory tracking for the end effector and base are performed using a decoupled controller, with impedance control for the floating base and inverse kinematic control of the manipulator to track the end effector position. Holding a fixed end effector position reference, the base reference is fixed or follows an arc trajectory about the end effector reference by 15 or 30 degrees. End effector tracking results are compared between the active delta manipulator and a locked manipulator configuration to simulate a rigidly mounted manipulator. Using an active manipulator reduces error at the end effector point. Next, we track a fast motion of the end effector in free space while performing the same base trajectories, which would not be possible to track with the base alone due to its slower dynamics. A path following error analysis shows the end effector tracking performance on the order of a few centimeters. For grasping in new or changing environments, we want to detect grasp configurations that work for previously unseen objects and that are also robust to collision with other objects. This work uses a 3D convolutional neural network for real-time 6 degree of freedom grasp detection. From a depth sensor mounted on the end effector, we produce a truncated sine distance function representation of the 3D scene. The TSDF scene representation is fed through our volumetric grasping network to produce a 3D grasp quality map with associated gripper position, orientation, and opening width for each voxel in the queried volume. The network is trained on a large data set of simulated GRASP trials. The output of the network is post-processed by Gaussian smoothing, masking for distance to the surface less than the finger depth, then thresholding the GRASP quality to produce a list of promising GRASP candidates. We apply the method to cleaning up cluttered objects from a table for evaluation. As a success metric, the robot was able to clear 92% of the objects without the need for explicit collision checking. Grasps are planned within 10 milliseconds, and depth images are processed in real time. Due to its inherent disturbance robustness, this method is suitable for implementation on an aerial robot. While autonomous navigation in 3D space has typically worked to avoid obstacles, for aerial manipulation we would instead like to traverse or approach a surface in a defined manner. Our new mesh manifold-based Riemannian motion planner enables surface-based planning in large workspaces at high precision and in real time. The approach uses a geometric mesh map representation that does not suffer from a priori discretization. It allows planning along near-global optimums while simultaneously reacting to sensor data at a kilohertz refresh rate. As such, this method can efficiently replan trajectories with local information to maintain distance or approach a surface even in new and changing environments. In many cases, performing a manipulation task may be a collaborative effort between a human operator and the robot. Using haptic teleoperation, the skills of an expert can be transferred to the remote site, and meaningful feedback and situational awareness can be fed back to the operator. We use a six degree of freedom robotic arm as a haptic teleoperation interface with full force and torque feedback capabilities. The limited teleoperation workspace of the manipulator is mapped to the unlimited workspace of the flying robot by representing position and rotation of the interface as rate commands for the robot. Feedback includes multiple informative wrenches, such as recentering of the interface, inertial resistance for sensing the dynamics, and additional guidance, such as avoiding inefficient or singular configurations of the flying robot. For interaction with the environment, we can further include filtered contact forces. Experiments demonstrate the functionality of these feedback terms and the corresponding behavior of the flying robot. Our next objective is to combine these capabilities and to achieve robust aerial manipulation in any environment.